Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Salsuma Silval and today I'm gonna talk to you about my trip to Sri Lanka. Let's go. After waiting for three hours along with my friends in the airport, we finally escaped the concrete jungle and moved towards Sri Lanka, the wonder of Asia. Our first terminal was in Mumbai Chhatrapati Shivaji Airport, which was humongous. Within the airport itself, there was a mini mode in India where you could find everything. From dining to clothing to accessories, everything was under one roof. The best part, the airport also had dogs roaming around giving free hugs to passengers. I know it might sound a little creepy for some, but yeah, it was fun. After having some KFCs and looking at the decoration of Chhatrapati Shivaji, we left towards Sri Lanka. After an intense two hours ride from Colombo, we finally reached to Matra. Enjoying the vista of Nilwala River or the Crocodile River, me and my friends plan to spend our time in Sri Lanka exactly like Sri Lankans do. So with that Sri Lankan swag, sipping the coconut water and walking like boss, we started searching for tuk-tuk. So our second destination was Gold Fort. Surrounded by sea, the fort was humongous. The fort was bustling with lovers clutching hands in every corner, foreigners busy enjoying the view and vendors selling their products. Our third and final destination for the day was Peace Pagoda. The Peace Pagoda, which lies on a hillside, was built by Japanese Buddhist monks as part of their scheme to build peace temples in conflict zones. The area was soothingly silent and one could listen hymns of the evening prayers now and then. Monks and devotees were playing musical instruments and offering prayers. While returning to hotel, we stopped by Matra bus stand to watch the nightlife of the city. The market was all pink, purple and white with lotus. Basically, lotus in temples of Sri Lanka is like marigolds in Nepali temples. As we were famished, we rushed to a local cafe. So on the fourth day, we went to University of Ruhuna. Peacocks were frolicking in the university premises. As soon as we finished our classes, we went to Polhena Beach. 
Within three days, we were completely tanned and our summer clothes were also not working. From swimming and floating in the sea, to giving that epic Bollywood style boomerang in the sea, we did it all. The trip to Kohena became more entertaining when we were welcomed by a team of Sri Lankan people. The dance became more fun when we gave a Nepali flavor to it. As the university had organized a dinner for us in Paul Cliff, we had to make sure that we left the beach on time. The hotel besides the sea was beautiful. Our day started with visit to Humanaya Blowhole. It is the only known blowhole in Sri Lanka and is considered to be the second largest blowhole in the world. The water fountain created by the geological feature shoots up every couple of minutes, depending on the nature of the sea. After waiting for almost half an hour, we finally saw a huge one. After that, we left to Yellow National Park. The park which lies by the Indian Ocean was initially used by allied Britishers as hunting ground. Our day started with warm cups of Ceylon tea and a visit to the harbour. Our plan was to visit Katarangama temple for the day. Before moving towards Katarangama, we stopped by a harbour. The harbour was bustling with fishermen busy cleaning and ferrying the fishes. After hours of ride, we finally reached Katarangama. One of the main reasons of keeping Katarangama in our schedule was to observe Hindu Buddhist weather temples and Muslim mosques in one same place. We started our visit from the Buddhist section. People mainly clad in white were offering prayers, going to monks for blessings, offering lotuses and burning incense sticks. The trees in the vicinity were white with birds and the hymns vibrated the entire surrounding. After having rounds of the temple, we moved forward to the Hindu section. The temple vicinity was maintained and upkeep and our feet didn't hurt even though we were walking barefoot. After having a lunch in the head monk's place, which is pretty special, as no one except monks could enter the place, we moved towards the Hindu section. With ever-smiling lotus vendors on the either side, one could see monkeys frolicking around. In the middle of the road, there was a huge elephant along with which one could click pictures. Feeding the elephant and caressing it did cheer up my mood. The Hindu section was completely different comparing to the Buddhist one. Bustling with devotees, hands of people were filled with fruits. Holding burning coconuts in their hands, people were breaking the coconuts into halves one by one. We stopped by stores where wooden statues were presented. The place was pretty cool as it had area of statues and carvings. The statues ranged from $3 to $3,000. 
As we were already hungry by then, we stopped by Batata Agro Technology Park. An archway formed by two collapsed hands welcomed us to the park. Peacock and bucket shaped hedges had added more to the beauty. We directly moved towards the food stalls where various types of authentic Sri Lankan food items and sweets were being prepared. We did see a small lake and large park located beyond the stalls, but we could not go any deeper as the park had already closed. Thus, we pacified our howling tummies with hoppers, teas, and samosas and left for our hotel. I was pretty excited as we were leaving for Colombo. After approximately two hours of ride, we finally reached Sri Lanka Foundation. Colombo was basically like Kathmandu in a sense it had a moderate weather, different types of malls and shops everywhere and everyone could understand English, unlike Matra. Hey hey, before moving forward meet Mua. I met him in Seattle in University of Washington. Crazy, talkative, annoying and king of exaggeration. Other words that perfectly suit him. But again, he's a true gentleman as well. After having a warm cup of ginger tea made by Muad, told you a perfect gentleman, we started riding to Bandargama. The main reason we went there was to try cutting. I had cutting in my bucket list which I had to take off during my trip to Colombo. We do have cutting in Nepal as well but the length of the ride is pretty short. Seeing riders ride their car in full speed in the track, I was so eager to get the steering wheel on my hands. I couldn't perform well in the first lap but slowly I gained momentum and in the third lap I finished 52 seconds earlier and made an accident as well. After that we went for shooting. I had tried archery but shooting was new for me. As we were pretty hungry by then, we planned to go to a restaurant which would serve us authentic Sri Lankan food. But as I couldn't wait that long, we thought of trying new foods. I had already tried rambutan in Madra, so I decided to try red bananas, passion fruit and durian. How is it? Same taste, no? A bit, a bit, a bit uh, thicker, I mean a bit uh, harder than normal bananas. It is a bit, a bit not ripe, yeah. No, but it's tastier compared to other bananas, even though it's not ripe. Uh, that I agree, but it, it's not ripe. If someone else hears only the audio, <laughs> I swear. <laughs> How is it, child? Yeah. 
If the fruit is ripe, it's much more sweet. Not sweet. You say, I asked you whether you want sugar or not. It's refreshing, but it's not sweet. Served in banana leaf, the food was delicious. We then went for a night ride. Colombo was still not done with the Christmas hangover. We then went to Gangaramaya temple. We didn't enter the temple as we had a very tight schedule but the temple looked beautiful. We then went to Dutch hospital. So right now we are in the inner courtyard of Dutch hospital. With extensive wooden doors and windows, charming colonnades, low slung tiled roofs and subtle colours, the aura of a bygone era is still alive. We call it no, I'm all about the face, by the face, don't dribble. I'm all about the face, by the face, don't dribble. I'm all about the face, by the face, don't dribble. I'm all about the face, 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 face. Hey! Yeah, Meet Hiran. He's my friend from Sushi as well. Quite unpredictable, but being a tech guy, he has one hell of a fashion sense. You might see me flaunting some of his designs in the near future. The street also known as Hospital Street, where we are standing right now, is one of the city's most charming pathways. With twinkling lights and jazzy music, the street transforms into an entertaining and delightful space at night with delicious food. <laughs> As I am a huge fan of flights and skyscrapers, I asked my bros to take me to the brightest place of the town. As I could not enter Sri Lanka Foundation if I crossed 12, we made a plan of sitting beside the lake till we were done and then we went to Sri Lanka Foundation. Compared to Matra, people in Colombo were pretty diet conscious. One could see people jogging and exercising everywhere. As we had to catch flight in the evening, we had to make sure that we kept track on our time. So we started our city tour from the building of Kargils, which was originally the residence of Captain Pieter Sluiskin, the former Dutch military commander. Passing the bank of Ceylon, the president's house and the Colombo Fort Clock Tower, we went to watch the Colombo Lighthouse. Colombo Fort Cloak Tower was previously a lighthouse, but it is no longer operational, but it does function as a clock tower. After that, we went to Jami Masjid, which was colored like candy cane. After a quick look of the masjid, we then went to Cinnamon Butterfly. Cinnamon Butterfly was calm and beautiful and had huge food options. From salads to beetroot and cucumber shots, to sushis to chocolate fountain, 
the food options were huge. As I had only promised for a coffee treat, we started sipping our coffee by the pool. As I didn't want to return empty-handed, we went for shopping. I felt like buying everything. But yeah, we settled for teas, chocolates and mementos. Time constraints, people. We hardly had an hour left, so I went to Muat's place again to meet Aisha. I wanted to meet Aisha, who I believe is my carbon copy. The only difference is she is way cuter. Well, if that word exists. I'm Aisha Zubair. <laughs> and I really like sweet and pink is my favorite color. I love her a lot because she's as talkative as me. Actually, she's more talkative than me. And uh, we've been able to relate so many things. She's made me watch cartoons and do crazy things. She's lying, don't believe her. I love her. Okay. Okay. I love her. Love friendship. Okay, hi, bye. Every journey comes to an end and so did this. Carrying loads of memories along with my 18 kg luggage, I then returned to Kathmandu. Bye-bye.